I want you to turn with me in your Bibles this morning to 1 Peter chapter 5, please. 1 Peter chapter 5, and I want to thank Stephen for his kind words of welcome. It's lovely to be with you in Ballyclare this morning and to have this opportunity in bringing the word of the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 5, and this word has been on my heart all week. And I want to talk to you this morning very simply on the Lord, my caretaker. The Lord, my caretaker. Before we read the word of God, let's just bow in a brief word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege of worship this morning. And we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of coming to your word. We thank you that we have it in our own language. We bless thee that holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And we pray, Lord, that as we come to your word this morning, that we might know the help and aid and ministry of the Holy Ghost. Speak, Lord, in the stillness. While we wait on thee, hush our hearts to listen in expectancy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 5, please. And the verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 5 and the verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore unto the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strength, and settle you. To whom be glory, to him be glory and dominion, forever and ever. Amen. Let's keep our Bibles open there at 1 Peter chapter 5. Frank Graf was a Methodist minister who served the Lord in the Philadelphia area in the United States of America from 1890 until his death in 1919. He was known as the Sunshine Minister because of his joyful disposition and his optimistic faith. One time, however, in his life, Frank went through a dark valley. He lost his experience, he lost his joy, he lost his radiance. And he was in the valley of despair and despondency and depression. One day he began to sing Joseph Scriven's lovely hymn. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. And as Frank began to sing that hymn, the Lord's peace began to fill his heart again. And then he remembered this verse of scripture casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And Frank began to shout out at the top of his voice, I know my Savior cares. As a result of that dark experience, he wrote these words, Does Jesus care when my heart is pain? To meet too deeply for mirth or song, as the burdens press and the cares distress, and the way grows weary and long, does Jesus care? Was that not the question upon the hearts and minds of the disciples 
as they crossed the Sea of Galilee on one occasion. You remember the storm arose. The disciples, thinking that a watery grave lay ahead of them, woke the Lord Jesus and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Like the disciples, I'm sure that many of us here this morning have asked the question perhaps more than once, Lord, do you really care? You see, the devil wants us to think that God doesn't care. He wants us to think that God has forsaken us. When the going gets tough, the devil whispers in our ear, if the Lord really cared, he wouldn't have allowed that to happen. How many times in our trial, in our pain, in our sorrow, Satan has tried to cast doubts on the love and the faithfulness of God. Somehow we think that when life is easy, the Lord is with us, and that when life is difficult, the Lord has forsaken us. Maybe you're here this morning, and you're asking the question, does Jesus care? I wonder, was that what Peter's readers were thinking? Remember that Peter wrote this epistle against the backcloth of persecution. What happened was this. In July of AD 64, the great fire of Rome broke out, and the city of Rome was badly destroyed. The emperor Nero was widely suspected of arson, but he managed to deflect suspicion away from himself to the Christians. The result, a savage outbreak of persecution began. Nero ruled the Christians in pitch and set light to them while they were still alive. He used them as torches, living torches of flame to light his gardens. He sewed them up in wild skins of animals and then he allowed wild dogs to tear them to pieces. The gateway to persecution had begun and forever the Christians were to live under this threat. And so Peter, he's writing this letter out of a pastor's heart, out of an elder's heart, to encourage and to comfort and consolidate these believers. What a statement verse 7 would have been to them in the midst of their persecution as Peter reminds them, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. What a statement to begin the year with. What a great text to go down this week with. Uh, did you notice that the statement begins with he and it ends with you? It begins with the shepherd and ends with the sheep and all the sheep and their sum total are here. The old sheep, the young sheep, the wandering sheep, the worshipping sheep, the joyful sheep, the despondent sheep, they're all here. You and I are here. Can you think of anything more wonderful than that? For here is brought before us the Lord, my caretaker. I want you to notice first of all this morning that there's a word about anxiety here. Look at verse 7. Casting all your care. Christians of cares. I fear that many today are promoting a non-realistic view of the Christian life. Certain preachers and songwriters and singers are leading people to believe that the Christian life is one mountain top of experience after another. They try to convince us that once you become a Christian, you'll have no more problems or burdens in life. Here Peter acknowledges that Christians have burdens. The word that Peter uses for care here is an interesting word. It's the translation of a Greek word that means care or anxiety or worry. It really means being pulled apart. Actually, it's the combination of two words in the original. The first is split or divided. The second is, a, uh, the second is mine. And, and that's what worry is. It's a divided mind. It's a distracted mind. I wonder, can you identify with that this morning? 
You remember on one occasion the Lord Jesus visited that little home in Bethany on the east side of the city of Jerusalem. It was a home that he loved. He often uh, frequently visited there. On one occasion, he wasn't there long before Martha went into the kitchen and she started to prepare a lavish meal for the Savior. Mary helped her and then she sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. And Martha was upset. She was agitated. And she came out of the kitchen and she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? And the Lord Jesus said, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. There's our word for worry. How often do we make Martha's mistake? Our minds are split, they're divided, they're distracted. We lose our peace as we retain our burdens. It's interesting to notice that Peter uses the word care, or it's interesting to notice that this word care that Peter uses is used throughout the New Testament to describe different kinds of cares. For example, there are temporal cares. We worry what we put on our clothes. We worry what we put in our food. In the Gospel of Matthew, the Lord Jesus, using this same word, says, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Do we not live in days of increasing employment, spiraling costs, economic uncertainty? I wonder, is this your specific care this morning? Will you rule it upon the Lord? There are temporal cares. And then there are commercial cares. Christ speaks about the care of this world. There are many Christian businessmen in our province this morning. And while they do not have to hunt for the necessities of life, they're, off, they're often tormented about anxieties, about large transactions, a developing workforce. Are there not Christian businessmen in our province this morning? And perhaps you're one of them. And they cannot sleep on their beds at night. They're dealing with millions of pounds and they're burdened and they're concerned. The Bible reminds us there are temporal cares, there are commercial cares, there are paternal cares, there are cares that have to do with your family and mine. Paul says, he that is married careth for the things that are of this world. That must have vexed these believers especially. I mean, what would become of them in persecution? In the event of some of them being martyred because of their faith in Christ, how would their families be provided for? How would their children be defended against worldly, against worldly influences? My dear friend, a very natural care, if not carried to extreme, is the care of your children. Tell me this morning, as a parent, have you prayed for your children? Have you set before them a godly example? Have you worked to teach them the truth as it is in Christ? Will you leave your children with the Lord this morning? Will you cast your paternal cares upon Him? Will you leave your sons and daughters with the Lord? Is this not what Peter's getting at when he says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. There are temporal cares. There are commercial cares. There are paternal cares. There are spiritual cares. The Lord Jesus, speaking of persecution, said, And when they bring you up to the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take no thought how or what thing ye shall answer, or what thing ye shall say. Now remember, the Christians to whom Peter was writing were undergoing persecution. The circumstances in which they found themselves Give tremendous rise for anxiety and worry. How would they react to persecution? Would they remain true to the Lord when the fires got hotter? Or would they fall by the hand of the enemy? I wonder this morning, is your care a spiritual one? Do you fear that your fear and faith will fail? Are you anxious that you'll fall spiritually? Peter says, roll that care upon the Lord. All oh, the multiplicity of cares. 
that enter into your life and mine. Temporal cares, commercial cares, spiritual cares. And then Peter reminds us that there are ecclesiastical cares. You notice how he begins this chapter. He talks about the elders. The elders which among you I exhort, who am also an elder. What problems confront the under shepherds of the flock? You remember what Paul writes to the church in Corinth. Beside those things which are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. How do you shepherd a flock of God's people? How do you adjust differences between the people of God? How do you reach the loss for Christ? How do you maintain momentum in the work of Christ in these difficult days? Isn't it encouraging to notice that we can cast our work for God into the hands of God. My friend, what's your personal care this morning? Are you well done with your work for God? Do you feel that you will fall spiritually? Have you family cares, business cares, commercial cares, health cares? Peter says, cast them upon the Lord. There's a word about anxiety here. Notice secondly, there's a word about activity here. Peter, the activist, says, casting all your care upon him. In other words, we're exhorted to do something which is very practical. This Greek word for casting, it's a very interesting word. You remember that Paul was taken on that sea voyage to Rome. And you remember that while he was making his way to Rome, he and the soldiers on board had a tremendous storm to endure. The sailors on board were afraid that the ship would capsize. Uh, and what did they do? Dr. Luke says, we cast out with our hands the tackling of the ship. It's the same word as here. Here was feverish activity. Life was in jeopardy. Cargo, which was unwarranted considering the state of the weather had to be jettisoned. So what did they do? They hurled it overboard. They lightened the load by dumping it. Remember Peter was an experienced fisherman. He was brought up around the lake of Galilee. He knew the lake of Galilee like the back of his hand. Peter knew what it was to cast his net upon the water. And so taking this word, Peter says, casting all your pair upon him, just as, the old, as in the olden days, he would throw his net upon the sea. Can you imagine what would happen? If Peter had only thrown part of the net on the sea and kept the larger part of it in the boat, I tell you, he wouldn't have gathered much of a harvest of fish from the sea. My friend, this morning, what are you doing with your worry? What are you doing with your concern? What are you doing with your anxiety? Are you throwing it from yourself upon the Lord? Is the entire burden going? Or are you somehow drawing the net back and continuing to carry your care? You see this morning, you're either carrying your care or casting your care. Peter's exhorting us to do something which is very practical. And then again, verse 7, Peter's exhorting us to do something which is very prudent. I mean, is there anything more prudent than this? Just to cast your care upon the Lord. Just to roll them upon the Lord. Just to make them His. Just to look to the Lord and say, Lord, take this and take this. Lord, I cannot bear this and I cannot bear this. Lord, you've taken my sins. I'm trusting you now as I cast my care upon you to do more for me than I need. Don't be satisfied with rolling yourself upon the Lord. Roll your burden upon the Lord. For he who can carry the one can carry the other. I heard about a little boy who was helping his dad one day move some books upstairs from the ground floor of the house to the first floor. And as he was carrying these books, the little boy fell beneath the weight of the books that he was bearing. You know what happened? Along came his father, and he took that little boy in his arms, and he carried both the book and the burden into that sky. Do you think the Lord will deal any differently with us? 
My friends, God cannot fail us. He cannot forsake us. He can smite rocks and seas. He commands the birds and they bring meat. He commands the fish and they bring cow and bring cows. Our God takes up the aisles as a little things. Is it not, my dear friends, easy for him to bear your heaviest load? Casting all your care upon him. Is that what you're doing? Are you casting your care upon the Lord? I want you to do this. There's a word about anxiety here. There's a word about activity here. But notice verse 7 again. There's a word about ability here. Peter makes a statement. Casting all your care upon him. And then he gives a reason. For he careth for you. Kenneth Greek, Kenneth Weiss, the great Greek scholar, puts it like this. Casting all your care upon him, for you are his concern. Dr. Simba Baxter says, think of it. He who carries the universe on his shoulders carries you and me continually on his heart. What a word to begin this new year with all of its uncertainty and fear. Friend, this morning, burden believer, he careth for you. Cares for you in times of desperation. Do you recall Peter knew that? When Peter's mother-in-law was ill, the Lord Jesus healed her. When Peter didn't have any money to pay his taxes, the Lord paid his taxes for him. When Peter was almost drowned, the Lord Jesus rescued him. When Peter lost his temper in the garden of Gethsemane and flicked off the ear of Malchus, the Lord saved him from arrest. When, the, when Peter was in prison in Acts chapter 12, the Lord miraculously really released him. My dear friend this morning, listen. Are you facing desperate circumstances in your job, in your work, in your business, in your home? He careth for you in times of desperation. He careth for you in times of desolation. You remember the two on the road to Emmaus knew that here they were. They were downcast. They were depressed. They were disillusioned. But Jesus himself drew near and he went with them. The very visitation of Christ to them proved that the Savior cared. But there was more than visitation. There was exposition. For beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Could it be this morning that you're downcast, you're depressed, you're disillusioned? Maybe you think that in your life things don't make sense at all. The risen Lord wants to go and draw near to you this morning. He wants to walk the, the road of life with you. He really cares for you. Cares for you in times of des desperation. He cares for you in times of desolation. He cares for you in times of deprivation. You remember old John knew that? Can you see him? He's the last living apostle. He's 90 plus years. He's separated from believers. He's suffering persecution. He's banished to the inhospitable island of Patmos. He's bursting rocks on the chain guy. He's aged and forgotten. He's confined. He's without sufficient food. He's improperly dressed. He's sleeping on the floor of a key of cold, lonely, dark. Under the severe lash of the overseer in prison for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Did the Lord Jesus really care about John? Did he understand? Did he know? Of course he did. It was there that he revealed himself to John. And John says, And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Are you here this morning at Ballyclare? Do you feel lonely? Do you feel forgotten? Do you feel that no one understands? The Lord does, for he cares for you. He careth for you. In times of desperation, in times of desolation, in times of destitution, my friend, he cares for you. In times of devastation, you remember Mary knew that. She was in great distress. The Bible says Mary stood in the sepulchre weeping. What a picture. Her heart is breaking. Her hopes are gone. Her world is shattered. Everything seemed lost. It was the darkest hour in her life. Life seemed all in vain. She felt helpless and hopeless. 
And then she heard a voice, an unmistakable voice, a voice she knew, a voice she recognized, his voice, the Master's voice, Mary. Christ really cared. Does your world feel sick? Does your world seem finished? Do you feel hopeless and helpless this morning? Does everything seem to be lost? He careth for you. He's got you upon his heart. My friends, remember, as you go into this new year, the storms may come, sickness may come, sorrow may come, suffering may come, but one thing is absolutely certain, and it's this, in the midst of all your problems, you can experience the joy of knowing that he careth for you. Maybe you're here this morning and you're not a Christian. Oh, my dear friend, I ask you, I implore you, I plead with you to cast the burden of your sin upon the Lord. Come to the cross this morning and feel like pilgrim and pilgrim's progress. Leave the burden of your sin at the foot of the cross. Place your trust and faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because the Lord cares for you. There's a word about anxiety here. There's a word about activity here. There's a word about ability here. Casting all your care upon him. For he careth for you. As I sat at the feet of the Master, this precious truth I did learn, that the Lord had considered my trouble, and I was his personal concern. He thought upon me in my trials, and he prayed for me all the while. He promised that he would be with me. I have his presence mile after mile. One day I know I'll see Jesus. This walk of faith will give way to sight. But meantime, I don't dwell in the darkness, for the Lord is my strength and my light. Oh, fear not the uncertain future. The Lord knows what lies ahead. He will hold your right hand and say, fear not. And he will always do just what he said. The Lord has considered your trouble. He'll give you grace to bring you right through. So cast all your care upon Jesus. And remember, he careth for you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for the comfort of your word. We thank you for its encouragement to our hearts this morning. And we pray, Lord, that we may grasp this truth as we step into the uncertain future of 2021. That the Lord really cares for me. Bless those who must leave us just now. Grant our Father that as we take a moment or two just to remember the Lord Jesus in his death, that our hearts might be drawn out after Christ. We ask it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.